Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today, I would like to discuss the topic of hope. Hope can bring us through a lot of hard times in life. Hope keeps us driven and focused on the prize. But what is hope? Let's define hope in biblical terms. Romans 8 verses 24 through 25 says, For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is not seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Hope in scripture is not the world's definition of I hope so. Hope as the world defines it is a desire for some future occurrence of which one is not assured of attaining. The ancient world did not generally regard hope as a virtue, but merely as a temporary illusion. Historians tell us that a great cloud of hopelessness covered the ancient world. Philosophies were empty, traditions were disappearing, religions were powerless to help men face either life or death. People longed to pierce the veil and get some message of hope from the other side, but there is none outside of Christ. Hebrews 6 verses 18 through 19 says that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, in which enters the presence behind the veil. Our hope is is embodied in Christ himself, who has entered into God's presence in the heavenly Holy of Holies on our behalf. Hope for the fulfillment of God's salvation promises is the anchor of the soul, keeping the believer secure during times of trouble and turmoil. Hebrews 7 verse 19 says, For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. Romans 5 verses 4 through 5 says, And perseverance, character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. How does proven character bring about hope? One of the purposes of suffering and affliction is to give us victory over those fears and make us full of hope and confidence as the children of God. Cranefield says, To have one's faith proved by God in the fires of tribulation and sustained by him so as to stand the test is to have one's hope in him and in the fulfillment of his promises. One's hope of his glory strengthened and confirmed. Proverbs 10 verse 28 says, the hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. Colossians 1 verses 4 through 5 says, Since we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Brian Bell says, Paul places hope last because he saw faith and love springing from it. How does the hope of heaven cause faith and love to come forth? As pagans, the Colossians had been without hope and without God in the world. Then came the gospel from Epaphras. Hope is laid up or stored away, put away for one's use, which referred to a royal Persian custom. Rulers would lay up in store goods for faithful servants. As Spurgeon reminds us, we can labor without ever a present reward, for we look for a reward in the world to come. Faith rests on the past. Love works in the present, and hope looks toward the future. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 12 says, Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. The hope of the gospel gave Paul great confidence to preach with boldness and certainty. Titus 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Biblical hope is our blessed hope, the sure hope we have of the return of our bridegroom, the Lord Jesus, to catch us up. The church is one that is prosperous, filled with riches. It is a hope that stabilizes our souls in this present world in which we live as aliens and strangers in the world. Hope is seen with the eyes of faith. Charles Simeon has a great word to encourage us to develop this supernatural vision. Quote, To a man who has heaven in his eye, nothing is impossible. Behold Moses, when at the summit of human grandeur and power, an alternative was laid before him, to suffer affliction with the people of God or to enjoy the pleasures and honors of the court of Pharaoh, in which did he prefer. He chose the reproach of Christ, esteeming it to be greater riches than all the treasures of Egypt. And what guided him to this strange decision? It was hope. He had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Hebrews 11 verse 24. In like manner, Paul pressed forward in his heavenly course, forgetting what was behind and reaching forward to what was before. And we too, if we would run our race with patience, we must keep our eye steadily fixed on Him and continue without intermission looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Then we shall be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord when we are convinced in our mind that our labor shall not be in vain in the Lord. In a world filled with hopelessness, the Bible gives us hope. Christ gives us hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Maranatha.